I thought that constant lines are pretty boring. That is until the August 21 release, because now you can set the values of the constant lines using measures. And that opens a whole world of new possibilities. The example that I'm going to show you in this video is how you can highlight a certain period on a line chart using constant lines, shaded areas, and disconnected slices. And the end result will look like this. Let's see how it's done. Welcome to How to Power BI, my name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's have a look how we can use these constant lines and this new feature that allows us to write a DAX measure to set the value for the constant line. For this example, I already created a line chart that shows the total sales over time. And what is important is that the x-axis is continuous. So here under format, x-axis, type continuous, because only then you find here under the analytics tab, the x-axis constant line. Okay, so let's open it up and let's add a new line. Now here we can choose the value. So let's pick a value. Let's go to 2019. And then I want to have the month January, and then we take the first. Now, in the line chart, you already see the constant line popping up. And let's change the color from blue to gray. And then if we scroll down a little bit, now there's also an option to add a shaded area. So we can say shaded area after. So it highlights the area after the line. And here we can play around with the transparency. So maybe let's put it up a little bit to 95%. Then you can also decide what the position of the line is. And so we can say that it should be behind the actual data series line. Okay, and that's it. So now we have a constant line and we have a shaded area. Now, besides the shaded area, the other new thing is that we can set the value of the constant line using a DAX measure. And what I want to do is create a slicer that allows us to pick a certain date and then link that to the value for the constant line using a DAX measure. So as a natural starting point, let's create a slicer using the date. Okay, so I'm going to insert a slicer. Let's put it above our line chart. And I'm going to go to my date table, take the date field and put it onto the slicer. Now over here, we can hover over the slicer and change it from between slicer to after. Okay, so that we only have the left hand side. The next thing that I need is a measure that figures out, okay, what date is selected. Okay, so this we can do by writing a measure and we can call this measure start date where we look for the minimum of the date column in the date table. Okay, so to see if that works, I'm going to create a card visual, put it right next to the slicer. And on this card visual, I'm going to put the start date and you see that it shows now the 15th of February, which I selected in the slicer. So it's working. However, if we now look here at the line chart, you see that it is filtering the line chart and I don't want to filter everything from the 15th of February, 2019. I want to highlight it. Now to change the interaction from the slicer to the line chart, you can select the slicer, go to format and then edit interactions. And here we can simply turn off the interaction from the slicer to the line chart. The next thing that we now want to do is select the line chart go to the analytics tab and here we can set the value for the constant line by clicking on the conditional formatting button the fx button and here we want to base it on what field well the measure that we just created the start date so let's click on okay okay so we set up the conditional formatting let's also go down a little bit and add a data label to it so that we can see the actual date for the constant line now, unfortunately, you see that here we have our constant line for the 1st of January 2018 and not for the selected date, the 15th of February 2019. And the reason for that is, is that our slicer is not filtering the line chart. And because it doesn't filter the line chart, well, the first day that it finds is the 1st of January. Okay, so if I go back to my slicer and would turn on the filter interaction, then you see it works again. It shows me the 15th of February. But what doesn't work is that it's filtering, not highlighting. 
So we have a problem because if I set the interaction to none, well, then we do see the whole line chart. However, this then doesn't allow us to find the selected date. And if I set the filter interaction to the line chart, well, then it filters, of course, the line chart and that I don't want to have. So to overcome this, we are going to create a dummy date table. Okay, and use that one on a slicer. Now to do that, we are going to go to modeling, click on new table, and this new table we can call date dummy. And here we can just return all of the dates that we want to have for a slicer. And an easy way to do that is calendar auto, no arguments, just press enter. So now that we have our dummy date table with all of the dates that we have in a data model, we, we are going to use that instead of the original date column in the date table. So that date dummy table is completely disconnected in our data model. So let's go back to our slicer and replace the original date field with the date field from date dummy and put it right on top of it. And the next thing that we need to do is go to our start date measure. And instead of taking the minimum of dim date date, we want to have the date column from the date dummy table. Now let's check if it works. Let's pick a different date on a slicer. So let's drag the handle to the right and you see it works. And that is because on a slicer, we have now a date field, which comes from a disconnected table, date dummy. So it doesn't filter our line chart anymore, which shows the total sales because there's no relationship. And also with a measure, we pick up the minimum date. So the selected date from that slicer. Now, as a next step, we could show the total sales for the period that comes after the constant line. So let's add a new measure and let's call this measure total sales selected period. And let's use a calculate function because we want to calculate the total sales, but we want to change the filter context because we only want to have the dates after the selected date. So to do that, we can use a filter function and we're going to filter the date table. And here we want to have only the dates that come after or are equal to the selected date. So the start date. Okay. And then we can close the filter function and close the calculate function. All right. Now let's take a measure and put it onto our card visual from before. So I'm going to delete the start date and take here the total sales for the selected period. Now let's clean up our card visual. So let's turn off the category label. And then also here for the data label, let's make it blue. Okay. And then we can turn off the background color, make it a little bit smaller and put it right next to total sales. And now we nicely show the total sales for the selected period that comes after the constant line. Now, how can we make this even better? Well, instead of having only a start date, we can also add an ending date. Okay. So let's go back to our slicer and change it from an after to a between slicer so that we also can choose the ending date. So over here, let's drag this a little bit to the left and to set the ending date, we can do kind of the same thing as before. So we have the first uh, constant line for the starting point. And now we're going to add that second constant line, but there's no measure yet that figures out what the ending date is that I selected here in my slicer. So let's add that one first. And let's call this measure end date. And here I want to find the maximum inside of that date column of the date dummy table. Now let's close the bracket and let's go back to our line chart. Then let's go to analytics and let's add another constant line to the X axis. So let's add another one. And here we again can choose conditional formatting. And now we base it on the field and date. Let's click on OK. And you see our second constant line is in there. Now let's change the line color from blue to gray so that it matches the first one. And if we go down a little bit further, let's add some data labels to it so that it also shows the date. So now we have the two constant lines, but you see that shaded area from the first one. And I want to turn it off for the moment. I will get back to that a little bit later. So let's select the first constant line and then under shade region, set it to none. So now we can set these reference lines that we have using our slicer. However, the total sales for the selected period 
is still only taking into account that first date. So I have to go back to my total sales selected period measure. And then here we just have to add another condition where we say that the dim date, date column, needs to be before or equal to the end date. So that is fixed. However, what about that shaded area from before? Because what I actually wanted to create at the beginning is that it would highlight the area between the start and the ending date. However, there's a problem and I will show you what the problem is. Now let's go back to our constant lines again and add that shaded area that we had before to the first line. So here in the shade region, I want to have after. Now you see what happens. Huh? It gives shade to the region after the constant line. However, I want it to stop where the second one is. However, there's no option to say, okay, from here till there. Would have been nice though. So then I thought, what if we go to the second constant line and go down a little bit. And then here we could choose for the shaded region also after, but then make it white. And then I thought, okay, what if we put the transparency all the way to zero? However, what happens is that the shaded area is before the line, the data series line. And that's problematic because it basically blends out the whole part on the right. Now, here the position is for the line, not for the shaded area. So if I change here the position to behind, well, my expectation was that the shaded area was, would also go to the, to the back, but that's not the case. So I hope that this is going to change in one of the future updates. So what I initially wanted to do doesn't work. However, what is still an interesting application is the following. What if we reverse it? So what if we go to that first constant line and instead of having the shaded region after, we set it to before. And then here for the shaded color, I'm going to choose white and then set the transparency very low. Okay, so to let's say 10%. So we blend out the area that we are not interested in. And then the same thing we could do for the right hand side. So I go to constant line two. And then also here, we go to shade region. We want to shade the region after, but put the, the transparency to, let's say, 10%. So you see, it nicely highlights that period that we are interested in by blending out the periods that we are not interested in instead of doing the reverse. Okay, so let's put on the finishing touches. So one thing that is still bothering me is that if we place the dates very close to one another, you see, it doesn't look nice or the data label disappears. Okay, so to fix that, what you could do is that you change the positioning of the data labels. So here for our constant lines, you can go to data label and then say for the first constant line that the position should be to the left. And for the second one, let's select it. For the second one, we can say that the position should be on the right hand side. So that when you place them very close to one another, you see both of them still nicely show. Now let's also take our slicer and change the formatting and make it a little bit smaller. So first of all, I want to get rid of the slicer header. Then the date inputs, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So over here, let's put it to, let's say nine. And then in general, I'm going to put responsiveness off so we can make it a bit smaller. And then also here, we can turn the background off. Okay, so now that this is done, let's place it here in the top right corner of the chart. And then here for the card visual, I could leave it as this. However, it's probably better if we make it part of the title. All right, so I'm going to add a new measure and let's call this one chart title. And here for the title, we want to show total sales and then space hyphen space. And then we want to combine that with the total sales of the selected period. And now we can take a line chart and go to title, click here on conditional formatting, and then here field value, and then choose our chart title measure. And let's click on okay. And you see, oh, that doesn't look nice. So we have to fix the measure a little bit by wrapping it inside of a format function. And then here for the formatting string, we can put in a zero, Two commas to show the millions and then an M to make it clear that it's the millions and then close the format function. So that looks a lot better. Now the card visual we can delete and that's it. This is how you can set up a line chart and highlight a certain period 
on the line chart by making use of the constant lines and the new feature that allows us to set the values for those constant lines. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, then consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, then just post them in the comment section below. And I hope to see you in the next video.